Well, hello everyone. Now working in the HVAC industry, I often hear this question. Why is it that air conditioners are so inefficient? Or, why is it that air conditioners consume so much electricity? Basically, why do I have to pay so much to run one? Can't they make one that does a lot of cooling, but doesn't cost so much to run? Today, I'm going to attempt to answer that question. I'll try to keep it brief and simple. If not, maybe a little bit incorrect but just for the sake of simplicity. I'm only going to talk about the most common types of air conditioners. That is a vapor compression cycle air conditioner. That's what most people have. If you're asking right now, do I have one of these? Chances are, if you have an air conditioner, you probably do. I'm going to cover the three main areas of energy consumption in air conditioners. The first being the compressor and the mechanical aspect. The second is going to be the refrigerant and the third is going to be the thermodynamic aspect. So let's jump right into it. If you have an air conditioner and it uses a vapor compression cycle, and again, you probably do. If it uses a vapor compression cycle, then that means it needs to have a compressor to compress and move the refrigerant through the system. Compressors are mechanical devices. They have a lot of moving parts. Being mechanical devices with a lot of moving parts means energy is required to move the parts around. The mechanical parts are subject to physical forces like friction and inertia. Anything that moves, in order to move it, you actually have to exert energy in order to move it. Anything at all. Compressors are no different. If you have a reciprocating compressor, you've got pistons and connecting rods with a crankshaft and an oil pump. All of these components require energy to move. And if you are paying the electric bill, then that means you have to pay for the compressor just to move those parts around. Now whether or not the air conditioner is actually working hard at compressing a gas or even if it's in a vacuum as long as the compressor is running you have to pay to move those parts around. Anytime the compressor the air conditioner is on you're paying for it. Now, refrigerants. Liquid refrigerant from the condensing unit enters the evaporator and when it does the pressure drops the evaporation starts. Anytime a liquid evaporates into a gas, that liquid must absorb thermal energy, or heat. Most people understand this, especially people who work with air conditioners. But what many people don't understand is simply this. Not all refrigerant liquids require the same amount of energy to evaporate. Some liquid refrigerants require quite a lot of energy to evaporate. Ammonia, for example, although that one's not commonly used. Some refrigerants, however, their liquids don't really require much energy to evaporate at all. R12 doesn't really have a very high heat of evaporation. So for the refrigerants that have very high heat of evaporation, that means you don't need much of it to evaporate and to absorb quite a lot of heat. But some refrigerants, they don't really absorb much when they evaporate. What does that mean, really? That means Refrigerants that don't have a very high heat of evaporation, you need a lot of it. And because you need a lot of it, then that means the compressor is going to have to work harder at moving a greater quantity of refrigerant around. The refrigerants that are commonly used today are actually pretty poor performers. They don't have very high heats of evaporation. That means most air conditioners are working hard to move around a great quantity of refrigerant. And again, if you're paying the electric bill, that means you have to pay every time the compressor moves around the refrigerant. Refrigerants that aren't commonly used, and I'll show you some of those up here, they perform much better, but for one reason or another they're not actually used. Hydrocarbons like propane and isobutane have higher heats of evaporation. So if you use those, you wouldn't have to pay as much to circulate all those through the system. But unfortunately, you can't use those. It's illegal for you to use those in an air conditioner because they're flammable and they're deemed too dangerous to use. Ammonia is a great performer, but again, you can't use it. The reason you can't use it is simple. It's a respiratory irritant. You get one little whiff of that, you won't be able to breathe, and you could even pass out. Although it is used in some very large industrial and commercial applications, you still can't use it in your home. The third and final reason air conditioners consume electricity is simply thermodynamics. 
The second law of thermodynamics is pretty clear and easy to understand. Heat flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. What that means is simple. If it's warmer outside than it is inside, that means heat from outside is going to come in and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. You will have to continue to run your air conditioner for as long as it's hotter outside than it is inside. The greater the difference between inside and outside, the more energy is consumed by the air conditioner. Air conditioners become much less efficient when the temperature differences are greater. So, that's going to conclude this one. This is a pretty brief one. That's a brief explanation, and I hope you understood it. If you do have any questions, you can comment, message me, or otherwise contact me through email. I thank you guys for watching.